guys and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, furniture in the case of this week, whatever creative rabbit hole I may be going down at the moment, as well as a look at what I am making for my small business where I create project bags and curate tools for makers like you. My hope each week is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity, to live slowly and with intention, and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you've had a wonderful week. I am doing well. I've had another wonderful week nesting. I have so much to share with you. A little update on some knitting. I did some commute knitting, some train knitting this week. So not only an update on what I am making, but also how and where I was making it, which is really exciting. Um, some furniture, a little bit of house making to update you on as I just recently moved, if you hadn't seen the most recent vlog, last week's vlog. And then at the very end, should you be interested, a little bit of shop news. So without further ado, grab your knitting or stitching, a cozy or cool beverage, and let's catch up. An update on my knitting, first and foremost, I made some progress on my summer sock that I cast on last week. Uh, this is where I was at last week when I shared it with you, and I've knit all of this, which is not too bad for just recently having uh, got my knit Joe, my knitting mojo back. <laughs> and I uh, just recently moved just over two weeks ago now, so still really busy making things for my home, if you will, which I can't wait to share with you here in a little bit but it's been lovely to have this on the go and it's TV knitting because it's just blissful uh, knitting in the round I'm doing magic loop uh, method uh, before I forget a little bit about this gorgeous yarn this is yarn by Hugh Loco uh, I have links to everything that I chat about to down in the description box below and this is a stash yarn from, I want to say about three years ago, and this is from her Backyard Collection. So she rotates these colorways that are inspired by chickens in her backyard. Um, this is the Cream Leg Bar sock set. Um, and it comes with two mini skeins and one main skein, which is this color. Uh, it's merino sock, uh, it, which is an 80%, 20% superwash merino to nylon base. Um, the main skein is 400 yards, uh, 800 grams. I'll just put this up here so you can look at it. <laughs> um, and then the two uh, gram, or tw two minis are 20 gram min minis each. This is from the 2018 collection. Look, it says it right there. So just beautiful. I'm using this kind of terracotta colorway for the toe and the cuff. I'm doing toe up, which is kind of my go-to way of making a sock. And then I'm going to use this color for the heel, which I am approaching very quickly. I'm about a quarter of an inch away from doing that. Let me show you the skein of yarn here. Oh, so pretty. And then Terracotta colorway. Oh, love it, love it, love it. And then I've got my trusty sock ruler, which I've had for several years. There's the info. I'll try to remember to put it in the show notes as well. But oh my goodness. So let me kind of measure here. It's great. It, and you can use this ruler for really anything, but it's wonderful for toe up especially. But I use, I've done, I've used it for um, cuff down as well. But as you can see, I probably just have a few more rows till I get to the seven inch mark for my measurement of my foot and also my mama's foot because these might be socks for my mom. <laughs> uh, by the way, the Progress Keeper is a little lavender 
uh, bush flower and these are in my shop um, and the link is down below and yeah it's just a, oh, chugging along um, I am using magic loop method as I mentioned um, using 30 inch cables 2.25 millimeter needles these are chow goo needles and one thing I wanted to note this week about the yarn I love the yarn but it is I believe a two ply if you can see let me get it close here so you can kind of see it um, I believe it's a two ply I'm trying to undo it so it can kind of see it there and that is to note because I find the way that I knit in particular um, two ply can be quite splitty meaning that when I am knitting and I'm going through the, the back loop or like going through the loop here like this sometimes especially hide my face <laughs> it's not working I'll show you a close-up here of me knitting so um, when I'm going through the loop um, sometimes I can just catch not fully all of the loop of the yarn and it can split that ply can kind of either split right down the middle or just like one little piece of the of the wool doesn't go through and so I'm having to every once in a while um, kind of adjust my stitches and kind of take off one of those little loops and so it's not a smooth sailing and that I think that just has to do with how I knit but let me know down below if you find the same with two ply yarn but I regardless as long as you're mindful of that and, and are okay with it it creates such a beautiful fabric as you can see I can't resist knitting <laughs> and I definitely want to knit as I chat with you and update you on all the lifey stuff here at the end um, but yeah that's the main thing that I've been knitting this week I'm so eager I'm so close I can taste it with getting my home fully settled to a point where I can just really shift gears creatively and focus mainly on knitting and sewing things for the shop and get that kind of balance again so I got to finish that last little bit on my tea and let me tell you when I went in to work one day this week uh, I work in San Francisco and I commute one or two days um, down on the train um, and it is like the one place I think in America and maybe in the whole northern hemisphere <laughs> that it well except for even further up north that was so cold I had to wear layers I almost had to get my sweaters out and I thought that would have been a perfect day for my quality so it it made me that much more motivated to finish that to make even more knitted tees so I'm looking forward to finishing that guy but in the meantime you know it is wonderful to have this on the needles so that seems, I'm gonna grab this again, this seems like a perfect segue since I mentioned the commute down there to let you know uh, what happened this week and the other things that I was making for the home. First of all, thank you all so much for your wonderful and heartwarming welcomes and comments uh, on last week's vlog. I was pleasantly surprised to know that so many of you live up here in Sacramento which is where I moved or in this area and you're letting me know of all of the yarn shops and knit nights to go to I have so many things to try out I'm you know once things are settled a little bit and I kind of get into a rhythm with my commute and energy and everything I definitely want to have a meetup so that will be really fun to coordinate as well and just uh, thank you thank you all so much just was so wonderful to reconnect with all of you it's I've gotten into such a wonderful rhythm uh, with weekly vlogs and to have that much time just a little bit over a month off um, from vlogging was a big jolt to my system and I think it was for all of you as well so it was really lovely to reconnect with you all this past week so thank you um, 
So yes, so this week I continued the homemaking. I um, did get some furniture on Tuesday. I went ahead and went to Ikea and got um, the kitchen island that I had had my eye on. Um, I got, I ended up getting some bedroom furniture. I got a chest of drawers and the reason why was because I realized I have a lot of knitwear and <laughs> I need a chest of drawers just for my knitwear <laughs> for the most part. So it's taken up the whole dresser. Um, and I almost pretty much have it unpacked. I thought I had it unpacked and then I realized there was yet another bin of knitwear that I needed to unpack. So that's getting there, but it's a really beautiful birch, um, very calming wood. And it has these like leather poles, these leather strap poles. So I really loved it cause it keeps the bedroom really neutral and, um, calming um and it's kind of segues from the like warmer tones of my couch and these beautiful boxes here um and kind of it's like a more neutral kind of version of that of the wood and all of that in my bedroom i will have once once things are all in their places i will have a home tour so don't worry but i'm trying to share snippets as i kind of do things with you all because i love seeing that on vlogs and i find it creative Creative, creatively invigorating and inspiring so I hope it is for you all too um, so I built my sister came over Tuesday morning before work um, and we she for the most part actually built my kitchen island I am still getting used to having help <laughs> Ooh, hold on I just pulled out all my stitches let's get them on back on there pause this is what happens when you're so excited about furniture building. <laughs> I'm going to take a little video here so you can see, because I know for some of you, it's like it stops your heart when stitches come off the needles. I just want to prove to you it's okay. <laughs> so now you get to see the behind the scenes of my chin tripod. Ooh, I'm missing one. Let's see. Where am I missing it? Oh, okay. And now I've saved that stitch there on the stitch marker. This is turning into an impromptu <laughs> tutorial <laughs> for all you new knitters out there. And then now I need to move the stitches over because I kind of put them on the wrong way onto the wrong needle let me say so I'm just gonna do this now I'm gonna get a crochet hook so I can pick up that stitch Okay, we're back in business. I think I'm gonna finish this row and stop knitting while I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> but I have no idea where I stopped. Um, I think I was talking about my dresser and that it's full of knitwear now. My sister came over on Tuesday and, oh, and built the kitchen island and I'm getting used to getting, having help and support, you know, it's, I had friends in the Bay Area, but my family's always lived far away ever since I moved away uh, to college. And um, I was moving further and further away from the city, um, you know, cost of living and just quality of life and stuff. And, and so it's just so lovely to have my family, but also a sense of community. I've already met so many neighbors and yeah, it's just really lovely. So uh, with a, a bit of assistance with me, because it was kind of a two-person job for like parts of the kitchen island build, um, we finished that in the morning. And then after work, I decided to 
just go forth and and build on this is on Thursday I should say rather not uh, Tuesday so um, I went forth and built the dresser and then I just was like let's do it let's build the nightstand uh, and very sore the next day which I will get to <laughs> here in a minute because they're were some repercussions because of that um, for that much activity um, but it just felt really good to have kind of all of the storage the the replacement storage because I donated some furniture built so now I can store my knitwear I um, also got some calyx uh, which is what this like shelving is called from Ikea. I got these like dividers there I, and just this morning I finally put away all of my yarn which felt so good. Um, I decided just to have these two cubby holes um, for the yarn on display uh, and then the rest is going to be staged decor with books so that I can allow as much light as possible um, going through the top two tiers, if you will, cub, cubbies, um, shelves, um, so I can get light to my little studio area and stuff. Um, but it was really good. I have a whole bag left. I had so much yarn. Don't we all? For a, a lot of us do. Not everyone, not to be presumptive, <laughs> but a lot of us have a lot of stash, which I love. Um, but I do have about a full bag. I put a little bit more into this kind of stash, if you will, for de-stash. Um, I added a little bit more to it today, but I'm looking forward to de-stashing that soon. I'll have more details in the in the near future for that. Um, and yeah, so now I'm just down to the books and to finishing up kind of my desk, like where my computer is and stuff. And then my mom came over yesterday on Friday and started to cut uh, charm packs. And that was just another instance where I was like, oh my gosh, it's just so wonderful to have help and to have shop help. Like she's so excited to help me out with the shop. And my Auntie Joyce was like, I wanna come over too. So she's, we're gonna schedule a couple more days here in the next couple of weeks for her to come over. And we're already making plans for like what they can help with for the holiday box kind of per, uh, packaging and stuff. So that's really exciting. And it's just all my dreams are coming true to have support and help. And uh, my family is just so excited about my shop. They have been since I started it about three years ago. But that's just and to be creating with them. It's just I, I don't have much more words for that because it's very overwhelming. It's still so fresh and so new and it's a dream come true, truly. So it's just wonderful. So uh, we were doing that as my mom was getting ready to do that. Um, I decided my pegboard, which I used to have in my last studio, um, in my last apartment, which was a studio, I had on the wall, I had two of them. And I actually really, for the most part, only used one of those pegboards and I thought it might be kind of cool to mount it uh, instead of hanging it on the wall to try it out to see if it works um, to mount it to my table because at Ikea it's also an Ikea not everything I own is Ikea but a lot of it is Ikea <laughs> um, but um, the pegboard they have like little mounts that you can put at the end of a table and that's mainly for like office furniture if you're using that furniture for the office and you can create like standing desk cubicles and stuff and dividers and partitions and they have them for this pegboard series um and so i mounted that at first i put it on like not in i didn't leave enough room for how wide the table is i thought i had measured it right but i hadn't so i had to like go back to the drawing board and do it again but once i got it up it's pretty sturdy and the heaviest thing that'll be on there are the i have three little bins of wonder clips which is what i use to piece things together for the shop um as i sew them so but if you know they're on the bottom if they fall or something like that then it'll be on the table already plus um i'm gonna be cutting 
a different direction than I did before. So the end, like the beginning of the bolt of fabric will be near the pegboard, like near the wall. Whereas before I used to be like on the opposite side of the table and the end of the fabric would be like on the other side, like the opposite of the wall. It's gonna, I tell you, when I start cutting fabric, it's gonna take some getting used to because cutting and kind of reaching for the rotary cutter and all of that stuff is so ingrained in my muscle memory from doing it over and over and over and over again for the shop. Um, and so it's gonna be interesting to see. I'm gonna be just like discombobulated <laughs> a little bit, but I might be pleasantly surprised. I might, I might be like, okay, it's cool. We got a new thing going. So, but I'm eager to jump in and do that. I, I think, knock on wood, hopefully, hopefully later next week because after I did the pegboard I packaged some more orders that came in and I was feeling very tender because of all of the furniture that I had built and after moving and everything but I've been feeling pretty good um but y'all I picked up my stitch marker little cart my little trolley that has all my stitch markers and I pulled my back, <laughs> which is why I'm sitting very tall and kind of awkwardly here. Hopefully you don't notice too much. Um, and I've been trying not to sit too much. I'm moving around, I'm doing ice packs. I'm feeling okay. It's already better today. And I'm taking Tylenol and doing what I can to keep the inflammation down. It, and it doesn't feel worse than your kind of general run of the mill pulled muscle, but Oh, I was like, come on. I had just like moved the boxes to try to get all of this done. And uh, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> My body was like, please stop. <laughs> please stop moving now. <laughs> so I, I'm doing okay, but I was just like, oh man. But I was able to this morning, um, you know, be very wary, be very careful. And I was able to put away all of my yarn, which felt so good. And to get the pegboard up and, you know, there's still lots, it's just all those last like little things. Did, have you guys all had that when you, after you move, it's just all of those little things that take, feel like they take forever to put away. And you want to be really mindful of it because you want to obviously know where you put things, but also, especially all of the things that I've left over minus the books are all like creative related. They're for the shop, they're tools, they're, um, you know, like measuring things, extra bias tape, um, the seam ripper, the, you know, all of those little things that I use and I need to be mindful of like how I'm going to grab it and go after having gotten a lot of that and really worked with a lot of these things in my last place. This is the first time they're in a new environment and, and I have to be mindful too that I can put it away and I'm going to do that first true new first uh, shop update and get into production mode and I bet I will go nope that needs to be in a completely different bin <laughs> and that needs to be in a completely different place and so it's going to be fixy and stuff but I'm eager to get it in its initial spot and in its initial bin its initial shelf and get rid of all of the rest of the boxes. The last little bit of lifey stuff to share with you all before I give you some shop news should you be interested is that I commuted down to the Bay Area this week. I went on Wednesday. This was my first foray on the train. I call this my lush commute option and because of the cost mainly and because of the ease of the kind of way that I went down there and I think it's gonna have to be the keeper for quality of life and to stay healthy and 
um, sane. <laughs> and so many of you and a lot of my Patreon peeps, um, because I shared a big post about how it was going the day of, were like, just do the train, make it work. It's worth the cost. Plus I'm using commuter benefits. So there's tax savings and all of that stuff I have to be mindful of. But um, so the commute was beautiful. I live uh, where I live now. I live just about five minutes away from the Sacramento train station um, and so once I got there um, it was easy peasy I found a park I went on the path um, all the way kind of the underground that you have to go to to get all the way out to the capital corridor train which is the route that I took I say once I got there because um, Oh, Sacramento reminds me a lot of Oklahoma City. I lived in Oklahoma for about five years um, when I went to grad school in Norman. Um, and it's this area is kind of a combination of agriculture farmers and capital kind of vibe and traffic and suburban traffic kind of congregating and coming together when you get into the downtown metropolitan area. And as a result, the signage is really not clear in a lot of ways. Plus where I live in, in, well, kind of all of West Sacramento to get anywhere is kind of this like little, like hive of freeways, like that crisscross and stuff that you get in areas like this. And so Google Maps was telling me, turn left to go here. And there was like no sign. And I thought I was going to be turning on a road and I would miss the sign. So I ended up like taking like 20 minutes just going around all of downtown Sacramento trying to get to this parking lot that I put into my <laughs> map. And finally I just put in the directions to the train station itself. And that did the trick. But I've got to just do some dry runs find my particular route that I want to go and just do it by memory and go what what it turns out what I need to do and I think Google Maps was trying to avoid me doing is kind of charming I have to go through old Sacramento um, which is like an old west preserved town out here um, and I kind of have to go through that in order to get to the parking lot that I am going to use for the train station so um so that was just really funny but once I got there I got on the train and kind of shake off the first day of school nerves I had my commuter bag and I packed the night before and was like what do I wear and everything I think that was the other thing that attributed to my um to my back was that I was not wearing the right shoes I'm waiting on a new pair of tennis shoes and it was not after two plus years of wearing either being barefoot at home in quarantine or just wearing Birkenstocks all the time. Um, yeah, I, it, uh, those new tennis shoes need to come <laughs> very soon. But I got into the train and it was lovely. I have to say, um, I still wear a mask indoors and I probably will for quite some time because I have asthma and autoimmune autoimmune stuff so I'm just pretty hyperactive about it um, so about half I'd say about half of the people were not wearing a mask and half still were I found that all of us that were wearing masks we kind of congregated together <laughs> sitting together so that was good and then I got I was able to nab a table and be able to do a little bit of work um, once I got closer to the Bay Area and I was having to kind of do a little bit of work before I got there because of commute times and stuff, but I did knit a little bit. I think I just had like that first train ride nerve, so I didn't knit too much. Um, and it was just lovely. It was lovely. And then I took it to the bus. Um, I did a bus transfer, so I was trying this out, and I think this is going to be the go to way. Um, where you go to Emeryville on the train and then part of your train ticket is you have an Amtrak bus transfer across the Bay Bridge into the city into kind of the downtown Salesforce area if you will the Salesforce tower and transit area and um, and that was easy peasy quick because the I, I really like doing that because you don't have to worry about waiting for a BART train because usually you used to have to do like a BART transfer 
up close to where I used to live in Richmond area. Um, you'd have to wait for a BART train. They're always delayed around this during like high commute times. They're really full. Um, and but going down to Emeryville, you're guaranteed to get on that bus because that bus will wait for the train until it arrives. So if the train is delayed for some reason, that bus will wait for the people that have that ticket that need that bus transfer. So that is great. That's just a worry off. And then it's a really lovely bus. So and it's Emeryville is right next to the Bay Bridge. So you really I don't even think we went on the freeway at all. You just kind of go down uh, a side street and then you get straight onto the freeway and then you're on like the carpool. And so it was great. It was great. I think it only took like maybe 20 minutes or something on the bus to get into the city. And then this is the lush part. I decided to do a lift, a car, like an Uber or Lyft, L-Y-F-T. Um, from the bus stop to work to the opera house um, and that's where I'm kind of like it would be more cost-effective if I took the bus but because of the high numbers right now for COVID in the Bay Area I just taking the bus is a whole nother thing there and so in terms of health safety and stuff because um, they don't have the masks well, it wasn't like on the train, but it was just, I felt more safe taking a lift. Plus, it was so much quicker, too. So it only took like maybe 10, maybe less than 10 minutes to get from the bus stop to the opera house. So, but it was lovely. And then the commute home was equally as lovely, which was nice to know. I'll have to play with the timing of getting to the bus stop because there's more traffic in the middle of the day or the end of the day of the work day. Um, so that'll just, you know, take getting used to and getting the timing down and everything. But it was so lovely to come back. And y'all, it was so cold. I live in the heat zone like the rest of America and everyone in Europe. I am sending so much love to you all. I've heard from so many of you. You're just melting away. <laughs> I um it's 100 plus here in the summer and which I knew going into it but uh going down there it's you know like Mark Twain said the coldest winter you'll ever spend is summer in San Francisco and boy howdy was it cold I think it was like 54 most of the day a high of like 63 or something like that Carl the Fog welcomed me back to the city when I got there so it was really really lovely i just i went to lunch with a colleague of mine and the breeze the like ocean bay breeze like whipped my hair my hair was like crazy when i got home and i just was like oh i'm gonna live this up while i'm here so it's gonna be nice to have like a day or two respite from summertime and and also for, it gets way colder up here in the winter time um so it'll be nice to have like nice that nice mild weather i'll still be able to experience it a little bit but the commute went really well and it was a really it was really nice to see a lot of my colleagues again in person all right i am gonna wrap it up here a little bit of shop news there also like some music is happening outside so hopefully you're not hearing it too much we'll see what what it's like in the editing here a little bit but a little bit of shop news um thank you all so much for your orders this past week and for those of you who have gotten a holiday box i'm so glad that you were able to get one that had reached out to me before hoping that i would put a little bit more in the shop um there's still some more in there they're going fast though and they'll be um going out of the shop for sure at the end of this month july 31st all of the details about the holiday boxes can be found on stitchingthehighnotes.com. Uh, I am going to be making the donation to UNICEF after a lot of you bought uh, a lot. I think there's only maybe one or two bags left in from the Sunflowers for Peace collection. 15% uh, of the net profits from that collection are, is going to UNICEF in support of Ukrainian children refugees. So I'm looking forward to making that donation in the next couple of days and I will share the grand total with you all on Instagram in an upcoming newsletter and of course here on the vlog next week. 
and then finally i am working hard and planning and gearing up for the first big update from this new studio this little studio over there um, and this will be a summer clear out um, restock sale de destock if you will i have so many um one or two yards of fabric from past collections that i'm going to be making into either drawstring bags or sweater bags i'll have more details next week about all of that uh, of course make sure to sign up for the newsletter as well and follow me over on instagram too and that's gonna do it for this week now that this is back on the needles i'm gonna knit a little bit more maybe actually hold it because i am going tonight to go see thor love and thunder at a drive-in theater with my family and my nephew and i definitely want to have a little bit of movie knitting especially because it'll be outdoors it's gonna be so much fun but i've got to edit this vlog and then go pick up some snacks for the family and it's gonna be a nice night so i hope that you all had a wonderful weekend here is to a beautiful week ahead and I will see you next week. Bye.